shine today, my Lord, on this 16th day of June 2019, shine on the Father's Day message that emanates from the Sanctuary Recording Studio of the New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church right here in Linden, Alabama. Text for today's message is going to consist of the 15th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke in its entirety. There is no subject for this message because the scope is so broad, so rich, so all-encompassing. The skills of rhetoric, speech writing, and the academic discipline associated with those just doesn't afford me the luxury of assigning a subject to this message. However, I do have a little three-point outline that I want to try and develop in this Father's Day message. Before I do that, before I delve into the message, I want to again call for, I want to call for reparations to be put on the national agenda in Washington, D.C. on this Father's Day. And I wanted to come from the Juneteenth celebrations in Texas and throughout these United States of America. The time is far spent and past due for the wounded to be made whole in this country. I agree with Richard Ney when he said that the controllers are spinning a crooked wheel and they're dealing from the bottom of the deck. We need to be made whole. The Civil War didn't do it. And I don't want to even get off into what it means to be a black father in white America. I don't want to deal with that. But it is time. Now, I'll say this. The 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke comes in the last months that Jesus had to live. You and I are going to come to our last months at some point in time. Just keep living. Uh, now for my three points. Point number one, there are in this chapter lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son, all immensely valuable. 
Part number two, I'll have a little bit to say about the insanity of sin. I might even touch on moral bankruptcy. And I'm going to scoot out of here with the third and final division in this message, which I have labeled the great decision. Because if I do my job as a preacher, I will extend the call to discipleship and ask you to make a great decision. I wanted to just deal with the prodigal son in this chapter, but I would be doing Jesus and St. Luke an injustice to focus just on the lost son. I've considered a few experts, Dr. Tellis Chapman, Reverend Willie Billy Graham, Reverend Charles Stanley, the late Dr. Oliver B. Green, probably was most influential in my ministry. And this is what Dr. Green had to say. He says, that the editors and commentators made a mistake in this 15th chapter of Luke by citing several parables, a parable of the lost sheep, parable of the lost corn, parable of the prodigal son. But Dr. Green says that they made a mistake. This is not three parables. This is one parable with three parts. I like that. Uh, a seeking savior is Jesus in these last months that he had to live. Uh, in Luke 15 and 6, <coughs> it says, And when he came home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Always a time for rejoicing when the lost is found. The world today is filled with lost men and women. Ha. It's the soul one of joy. Call tell his chapman said. Uh, it's party time. Call for celebration. The soul winner's joy because my lost sheep was found. Huh. I've got several wool rugs in my home. And one of the history books told me that wool was Largely responsible for the civilizing of the known world. It's a, such a valuable product. I saw one of those wool rugs. I'm not going to say which one it is. That sold for $4.5 million. <laughs> From a sheep. <laughs> valuable. There are people who have coin collections and a certain woman says in the eighth verse 
uh, had 10 pieces of silver. And if she lose one piece, did not light a candle, whew, light a candle and sweep the house, seeking diligently till she find it, that lost piece of silver, valuable down through the years, silver. Valuable. When she found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. There's the rejoicing of the seeker of the lost again. For I have found the peace which I had lost. Mm. Social fellowship is in order. Huh. In occasions when the lost is found. But I submit to you in fleeting time, I don't know where this time is going, but it's it's getting out of here. That more valuable than sheep, wool, more valuable than silver, more valuable than gold is a son, a daughter, a person, a lost soul. That is the most valuable of all three. That lost son. Ah, where are you today, my friend? Are you lost? Are you aware of your condition? Are you aware of your position? Dr. Vance Havner talks about this Laodicean age in which we live. Age in which moral bankruptcy is rampant. Selfishness, self-will, sinfulness, folly and foolishness, youth, parental indulgence, ha. wanderers and estrangement, pleasure-seeking, spiritual loss, improvidence, ungodliness, irreligious, all oh, factor in to the spiritual loss experienced in this Laodicean age by a poor, rich son. Billy Graham, uh, 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 Billy Graham said this son took one third of the family wealth and blew it. Huh. With no regard for morality, it was a case of the insanity of sin. Let me tell you something. I'm going to insert a little bit in this message. Uh, about, let's give you the definition of sin. 
sin is a transgression of the laws of God. Huh. And it drives a person crazy to live without regard to the laws of the one who may rule and sustain heaven and earth. That is crazy. Insanity. But Charles Stanley says that this parable of the prodigal son is a story of hope. It's a story of love. A story of a loving father. A loving father. Chapman tells us that well, Oliver Green said that that father had been looking in the direction that, that son left ever since the day he left home. And then Chapman says the reason why he was looking was because he wanted to be able to get to the son when he returned home before his servants saw him. Because his servants had a privilege and a duty to kill a son that had committed such foolishness. And the loving father had been looking in the direction of that son went ever since the day he left home, waiting for him to come home. You see where I'm going with this. God is waiting for you today. What you have to do is what it says there in that 17th verse of Luke 15. That, and when he came to himself, when he came to himself, he was besides himself. He was insane. He was out of his right mind. Now he had a mind all right enough, but it wasn't as good right mind. Mm. But he came to spiritual sanity. Ah. Uh, and it says, he said to himself, how many hard servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Is your soul hungry? Is there an emptiness in your life that you can't feel, my friends? Ha! I'm going to the great decision. It's 18 minutes gone, and I'm going to have to try to get this great decision in here and hit it and quit it and take my seat. This is what the son said. This is what you need to say. I will rise. Verse 18. Get up out of that pig pen. I will arise. Go to my father. Go to God. He's waiting for you. He's looking for you. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. That's what you need to tell Jesus. I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe you died for my sins and I believe that God raised you from the dead. Please, sir, save my soul. And he'll save your soul. He'll put a robe on you, a robe of righteousness. <laughs> and you know you've been wrong, but your father whew, is going to make you right. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The only wise God to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. This has been Albert Franklin Langston speaking to you from the Sanctuary Recording Studio of the New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of Linden, Alabama. God bless you. Keep you till we meet again.